As always, please pause the video and give this question some thought before moving on. Very often when determining whether a series is convergent or divergent, we must first rewrite the given series in a form that will become more familiar and more amenable to applying the rules of series that you are learning in this chapter. So our first goal in this problem is to do just that, is to rewrite it. So let's look at how we can do that. The first thing we can consider is the property of the sum of the numerator in a fraction. We are permitted to split that fraction into the sum of two separate fractions. This is just a basic property of fractions and that's the property that we're going to apply to this particular series first. So after applying that property we can next apply a property that involves exponents. Whenever you have a quantity raised to a power divided by another quantity raised to that same power you are permitted to rewrite that as one fraction all of which is raised to that power. So we're going to apply that property for this part of our series. Now after doing that we're going to notice that this part of the series is actually going to overall determine whether the original series is convergent or divergent and in order to see why this part matters we're going to try to rewrite this one again. And let's go ahead and rewrite that and then look back at it and provide some further explanation. Now this is the way that a standard calculus solutions manual or textbook would rewrite three halves to the end. They would split it up into this particular pattern and we will see why that is important in just a moment. But first we should explain how this expression here is indeed equivalent to three halves to the power of n. And in order to see why they are equivalent what we can do is put the power of one next to this three halves term here, maybe even enclose it in parentheses. And we recall that when multiplying exponential terms that have the same base, in this case that base is three over two, when we multiply those terms, what we do with their exponents is we add them. Now if you add one to the quantity n minus one, we can even perhaps do that off on the side, one plus the quantity n minus one, we would see that the one and the minus one would cancel, leaving us with simply n. So in other words when we multiply these two fractions and add their powers according to the rules of exponents we see that that is indeed three halves raised simply to the power of n. So that's why this form here and this form here are equivalent to one another. Now let's go back and see why this is indeed important. We learn in this chapter that a geometric series can be written, written in the general form that is displayed here. Now we can kind of compare this form with the form that we have in our problem and we'll notice if we sort of line things up in the right way we'll notice that the value of r in this particular case is three halves and the reason that that's important is because if the absolute value of r is greater than or equal to one then this geometric series would indeed be divergent. Now the absolute value of our value of r, three halves, is indeed greater than or equal to one. And because it is, we can conclude that that part of the series that we circled in red previously is indeed divergent. Now whether the entire series is divergent is determined by that. It really doesn't matter whether this portion here of our series is convergent or divergent because frankly even if it is convergent that is sort of outweighed by the fact that this part is divergent. So the analysis of this problem is done so long as we make the conclusion that that the second portion of our series was in fact divergent as we just did.